Hey everyone, I'm Lee, the VP of Developer Experience at Vercel. And today I'm really excited to talk about the Next.js 12.2 release. Let's get into it. 12.2 is packed with amazing features like middleware, which is now stable, allowing you to add dynamic routing and configure headers, rewrites, and more for your entire application. On-demand ISR, which allows you to update content without redeploying, now also stable. Extend the compilation phase of Next.js using SWC plugins, which is experimental. The edge runtime and API routes, which are really exciting new developments in Next.js. And finally, some improvements to Next Image. Let's get into it. All right, first up is middleware, which is now stable in Next.js 12.2. Thank you to everyone who tried out middleware during its beta period and gave us feedback. For those who are upgrading to 12.2, we published an upgrade guide to help you through this process for our new simplified and improved API. Middleware allows you to take the incoming request and modify the response, whether that's adding headers or cookies or redirecting or rewriting. It gives you the full flexibility of your Next.js application to configure every part of the routing phase and gives you dynamic at the speed of static. So let's make our first middleware. It starts by defining a top level middleware.js or TS file. And middleware runs using the edge runtime. This runtime is built on web standard APIs like fetch, request, and response, and aligns with the web platform to allow you to reuse your knowledge everywhere across the web and become a better web developer. So once you have access to the request, you can then change the cookies, change the headers, redirect, rewrite, all of these things using just the web standard APIs. Now, middleware runs on every single route in your application, but with 12.2, we've added a new powerful matching API that allows you to define either a single route, multiple routes, or even regexes to define when your middleware runs. Next, let's talk about on-demand incremental static regeneration. This feature was highly requested from the community and previously was in a beta state. On-demand ISR allows you to update the content of your website without needing to redeploy. So you can keep your fast build times while still working with dynamic content from your headless CMS or your database. So let's take a look at how we could add on-demand ISR into our Next.js application. It starts out with an API route that enables us to revalidate. Now this API route checks to make sure that it's a valid request as we don't wanna let anyone regenerate our pages and then uses this new dot revalidate function on the request, followed by some path that we want to regenerate get static props for. So we'll rerun the get static props method and we will tell our API route that we revalidated. Otherwise, we can catch an error if we'd like. That's all it takes to rerun your static generation after your site has been deployed. Next, let's talk about SWC plugins. So the Next.js compiler uses SWC under the hood to compile and minify your JavaScript code for production. Now, SWC is written in Rust, so it's really fast and it has a great developer experience for when you're running your application locally, as well as when you're building for production. And now with 12.2, you can extend this compilation process by bringing your own or a community created SWC plugin. SWC plugins are written in WebAssembly and defined in your next config file. So whether you create one yourself or you use a community plugin, you can override the next config to list out the plugins you wanna include and override the compilation process of Next.js. That's SWC plugins. Next, let's talk about edge API routes. So if you remember from middleware, I talked about the edge runtime which is this high performance runtime that's based on web standard APIs like request, response, and fetch. We're bringing this to API routes in 12.2 in an experimental state. The edge runtime is an extremely lightweight runtime, meaning you can get incredible performance and almost no cold bloots when running on edge infrastructure. Now this does come with some constraints, like you can't use native Node.js APIs like reading from the file system or writing from the file system, and instead it's based on standard web APIs. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like. If we were to define a new pages slash API slash edge.ts, we're able to define a function that uses the same signature as middleware. So this is gonna look familiar because it's using web standard APIs like request and response. So here we return this new hello world response and we're able to get better performance than an API route running with the Node.js runtime. Now we recognize that a lot of people are using 
node modules or other external packages that rely on Node.js. So the default runtime will remain Node.js. And this is an experimental feature you can opt to in and try out if your code is compatible with the Edge runtime. Building off API routes, wouldn't it be great if you could server render your entire application from the Edge and stream in responses? This is something we've been working on for some time now, and it's an experimental state for folks to try out when used in conjunction with React 18 and in the future server components as well. To start using Edge server rendering, you can opt in your entire Next.js application into using the Edge runtime inside of your Next config. Now we recognize that not everyone will be able to move and try out an Edge runtime for their entire application. So we're also giving folks the ability to opt into this new runtime on a per page basis, as well as for API routes. So let's say I have any page that's using Git server-side props and it's fetching some data from an API. Inside of this page, I can export a config that can either override my global setting of an edge runtime or on a per page basis, opt in to the edge runtime. Now, again, this is experimental. So we'd love to hear your feedback as you try this out and try using the edge runtime for server rendering. We've also been listening to your feedback about how we can improve the developer experience of Next Image, our image component that has built-in image optimization, and make it better for you. So in 12.2, we have some new exciting improvements. The first improvement is giving you more control over the images that you optimize using Next Image. Now, we've added a new experimental option for remote patterns. This allows you to use a wildcard to define the domains that you want to optimize images from. Secondly, while image optimization does require a server to optimize images on demand and keep your build times fast, we hear from Next.js developers who are using Next Export to generate a completely static site that they want to be able to opt out of just image optimization for their entire application and still use Next Image. And we've simplified this process by giving a new experimental flag inside your config that allows you to opt out of image optimization and still use the image component when using Next Export. Lastly, and probably the most exciting, is the new Next.js image component that we are releasing in an experimental state for folks to try and give feedback on. Now, this component was based on your feedback and what you told us you liked that the image component did and what you didn't like. So what we've done is we've removed the things that we got feedback on that weren't so great, like being very opinionated about how you could style it and instead try to improve the experience and make the component even faster. So for example, we're now relying on the built-in lazy loading functionality that's in the browser, and we're able to ship less client-side JavaScript by removing the custom code that was there before. So we'd love your feedback on this as we steer the future direction of the image component. Also, in case you missed it, about a month ago, we released the Layout RC, which is the biggest change to Next.js since it was released in 2016. This outlines the vision and future of how we'll do routing and layouts inside Next.js with a number of amazing benefits. So I'd highly recommend checking out this blog post if you haven't already seen it and giving us feedback on the GitHub discussion. Now that about wraps it up for this video and talking about Next.js 12.2, we'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. If you're loving the features, what you want to see in the next release, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.